Right, we're back. Right, so for this one, we are going to be um, doing a couple of things, actually. We're going to be making, first of all, our own mould using the Let's Resin Silicon Rubber 2-part. Um, I've given it a try. I've had absolutely amazing results um, actually making it inside another silicon mould. So, um, at the moment I'm kind of uh, stocking up for my first Christmas fair. Woohoo! Um, so yeah, I'm just making and making and making, but what I've found popular is these, you've probably seen them, um, these kind of fidget spin pendants. And with the mould that I've been using, um, quite a lot in my tutorials we can only make one pendant at a time so what I thought about doing and it worked was when you buy these um, I got these on Amazon I'll put the links again everything I use I'll put in the description let's just tip these out they come with these glass tabs um, so I thought you know I've got no use for these really because I'm putting my resin into these um, pendants so I thought, what about trying to make our own molds? So what we're gonna do in this tutorial is I'm gonna show you exactly how I did that so we can batch make um, these. And you know, these size cabs and the, the size of the molds we're gonna be using, you know, you can get various different things. Uh, these again are from Amazon, there's a bookmark, um, there's bracelets, there's lots of different things for this size. And like I've said to you before in a previous tutorial, this is a really handy tool especially if you've got um, this mold here because you can basically turn this on and it's a digital caliper um, a vernier caliper they're called and you can actually either measure the diameter this is a different size one and then you can kind of search so you know that's about 20 millimeters but what you can do is you can you can actually measure the cavities of whatever you want to create so these and then you can search for that size blank and that's what I do anyway so it's a really handy tool so what we're going to do is we're going to be using these in a silicon tray and we're going to mix the um, mixture up the silicon rubber pour that in and then after 24 hours we can demold that and then we've got a mold that we can batch make for various oops various different things so we're going to start by saying thank you we've just hit 22,000 subs which is amazing um, thank you for all your support coming back um, Previous subs new subs. Uh, thank you for those who have bought me a coffee if you find my tutorials are helping again In my description are the links that would be amazing. So right we're gonna begin I'm waffling on I've had too many coffees, so I'm gonna pause it and just calm down for a moment I'm getting a bit excited Sorry about that. I think I've calmed myself down a little bit now um, Kind of just went off on one there. Right. So this silicon from let's resin it's the same weight so we just measure out the exact same weight um, you can use different uh, tray molds I've used the square one for my previous one um, so we're just going to measure out equal parts of part A and part B like so and the key is with this is to stir really slowly if you've got a pressure chamber then I'm jealous because I really want one, but you don't need one. So I've gone a little bit over there. Just clean the bottle as I've used it and put the lid back on just to save any mess next time we get it out. So yeah, like I said, equal parts of part A and part B. Again, just clean around the bottle once you've poured to save any mess and like I said the key is to stir really slowly and make sure you scrape around the edges it's very similar to mixing your resin um, it's, a, it's obviously it's a, it's a bit thicker than resin but again use the rubber ones if you use wooden sticks you're gonna get more bubbles and we're just going to really stir this around. Um, you can add some mica powder or some um, dye to this, but I prefer just to be able to see um, 
any bubbles that I can by like kind of, kind of what I did last time was I shone a torch through the mold just to make sure that there were no bubbles sticking around the glass cabs if so just uh, move those around with a, a stick so what I'm gonna do now is just pause the video so you're not watching me stir and I'm not going to be baffling on and boring you um, as I'm going so I'm just gonna pause this and I'll be back once it's fully mixed right so I've been mixing my silicon for probably about eight minutes it's a, it's a bit more difficult to know when it's fully mixed with whereas with resin you kind of you can see it goes cloudy and then it you get that kind of streakiness in the in the resin and once it's clear you know with um, the silicon it's a little bit more difficult to tell so just make sure you stir it thoroughly and then just leave it aside for any any bubbles that have formed i just tap my cup down a few times um, and whilst that's kind of degassing this is a really important part so we've got our silicon mold you need to make sure that the depth is higher than the actual glass cabochon and the very important part as well is that we make sure this is really clean so i'm going to just be using some isopropanol and just going to pour that in there you could use soapy water but i'm just going to use some alcohol and just give this a thorough clean just to make sure that the the glass sticks to the mold because we what we don't want is the silicon getting underneath the glass we kind of just want it there's a bit of fluff in there kind of want it you'll see when I, i'll show you um but if, i want to also thank those who have subscribed to my membership um again the link is in my description if you do decide just gives you that chat badge I will be working on higher tiers at some point right so now I'm happy that my mold is clean this is where you need to kind of work out where sorry if my hands are getting in the way space them kind of nicely but when you put them down you can see let's try and get you a closer shot let's try it with a different one Let's get my focus right and try and zoom. Oh, that zoomed in way too far. So if I had placed this one down, for example, if you watch, you can see, did you see that? Where the glass kind of adheres to the silicon mold. So if I was to pull that up now, you'll see and push it back down. It's really hard to get on camera, but it kind of sticks to the mold so that you know that no silicon get underneath. And what we want to do is just evenly space them out. I'll probably do this off camera because it takes some time, but you kind of need to work out the best layout for the mold that you're using. So I could probably get, I don't know, five in this row if I space them correctly. But you kind of want it to look nice. A bit of OCD in me, you know, I like to line things up perfectly. But what I'm going to do, I've explained this part, is I'm going to arrange these how I like off camera and I will be back. Right, so I've got mine. They're not absolutely lined up perfectly, but I've fit quite a few in this mould. I know there's not much of a gap between each one, but we'll see how that goes. So this will mean that I can actually make 10 pendants at a time. And now when I was doing this, I noticed that there's one here. I don't know whether that marks inside or outside, but that would, the, the silicon would basically copy that and you'd end up with that on your mold. So it's very important to make sure that these are spotless. And again, just make sure you really push them down so that it kind of, you don't want any air underneath the glass so that the silicon can kind of get underneath there. We might have one or two where it will kind of we will need to work on it after it's demolded but just make sure they're really pushed down and securing and they're not going to kind of fall off um, the silicon mold now i uploaded my previous one onto tiktok and i think it had about 22 24 000 views people were asking how the silicon didn't bond to the silicon what i did to buff these up is i did spray some silicon release spray Again, I'll pop this in the description. I'm not sure if that helped, but all I 
I initially only added it to add a shine to the glass to buff it up so that it would come out really shiny. So if it made a difference, I'm not sure. I'm going to use this again because um, I just want to make sure that I've got this uh, these glass cabs as shiny as possible and kind of no dirt or debris on them but I, it may actually help in the process I'm not sure so we're just going to give it a light spray and then using just some towel we're going to buff over each one of the glass pieces just to make sure that they're clean and shiny like I said if you used if you had a fingerprint on one of these the silicon would copy that fingerprint and that would be in your mold permanently so whilst I'm doing this I'm just going to pause the video right now I'm happy I've kind of used the light as well just to make sure at an angle that there's no fibers or anything over the top of the glass pieces we are good to go and then we will let that set and come back and we'll test the molds afterwards so we're just going to pour the resin uh, not the resin I'm so used to pouring resin we're just going to pour the silicon over the piece there are some bubbles but they will rise just keep coming back and checking just going to fully cover all of these and fill the mold up to the brim like so and then what we can do is kind of just look around you can see some bubbles and just manipulate them up to the surface the same as you would with resin and just make sure come back in maybe I don't know 20 minutes 30 minutes and just make sure that you've got no bubbles sitting um, and that you, you've got a clean mold so I can see the larger bubbles at the moment I'm just manipulating those up to the surface and then what you can do is shine a torch I've got like a an LED lamp that I can shine through the sides and just make sure that there's kind of none sitting around the glass it doesn't matter if they're not on the glass you just want that glass to be as clear as possible so you can just go over each one with the stick and around the sides just to ensure that they're they're completely clear because the bubbles will ruin them otherwise so I'm gonna work on this and what we're going to do is let this set like i said and we will come back demold the demold the mold and we will test it out right i will see you soon all right so we're back to demold the mold it's uh it's solid now i've just peeled away that edge just to just to check but this is the my favorite part is just watching it come away from the silicon mold itself and as you can see it's not bonded it's not adhered to the silicon mold like i said i'm not sure if that's because i used the release spray or not just get that to just come away from the silicon i had a bit of a spillage where i tried to move it on this edge here i'm just going to pull that off like so and there we have our mold and now all we need to do is just one by one put out each of the glass pieces and I'll pause the video and come back once that is done right they're all out as you can see really shiny cavities so what we're gonna do now is just mix up some resin and test this out I'll pause that part but I'll show you obviously what products I'm using once we're ready to pour right, so I have a small amount of my resin pre-mixed and that is the Let's Resin 1-1 one, one. Um, as mentioned in the previous tutorial there are now I do now have discount codes for you guys um, they will all be again in the description down here if you just click the arrow um, but whilst this is degassing we're also going to be using um, the Let's Resin Vibrant ink set and as always in this needle tip bottle is just the Let's Resin um, the C focus isn't Let's try and get it focused is the C deeper 
Um, I've just decanted the larger bottles into this. Again, I'll put the product links in the description. So whilst we're waiting for this to degas, I've got my bond release spray. And like I've said in previous tutorials, I like to use this in new molds, especially ones that I've made when I remember. I just think it, it just helps, um, it prolongs the whitening of the mold. So I just give it a quick blast. And that just coats the inside of the mold with like a film of silicon. And I just think it helps protect the mold. This is just from what I found. So, right, so we'll be back as soon as I've lost my bubbles. Right, so I've got a couple of little bubbles in there, but I'm not too fussed. Now, um, what I should have mentioned is when you're laying them out, try to lay them out obviously in pairs it just makes it easier because if i had turned this around and i was working on it the other way around i'd probably automatically work on these as pairs but then i'd end up with odd ones it wouldn't matter because then that way these two end ones would then become pairs but it just makes it easier to just follow the follow the rows down if you do it in pairs another thing is is that if you do this the mold that you've used could be imprinted it, I noticed with this one, but with the last one I did, it didn't happen. So it must depend on the, the firmness or the, the hardness of the of, of the actual silicon. But obviously I could use this again and just place them in exactly the same places. Um, I could also use it again as a coaster, but obviously I'd work from the bottom up. So I wouldn't be working on it so that that would be on the front. Anyways, let's get a better angle. And we will start dropping some inks in now what I found with these is because they're so small it's best just to do one drop of color with a color with a white what I'll, I'll show you because it's easier instead of mixing two colors and then adding the white to each color it's it's hard because because they're so small the colors can just merge together so I found it's just safer just to add one drop of color let me shake my white up because I've forgotten. Oh, and again, inside this needle tip bottle, I've just put a small ball bearing just to shake up the pigments. So what I will now do is drop a white opposite the color and on top of. So that when it comes to the swirl, what I'll do is I'll just swirl the white through the colour. And you don't want to add too much to this. And it doesn't matter if you've got a small uh, amount of negative space. You can either just move that down or just wait for the swirl to, to rectify that. But what you want is kind of similar. It is difficult. A similar kind of look in each, each piece. So we'll go on the next one with... A purple and a white you can try using two colors I've, I've done it it does work it's just hard to get an, an exact matching pair I'll try it on the next one hopefully I'll get the result that I want and then you just tap each color instead with the white my bottles kind of dripping everywhere right let's go with some blue again with this one I'm just gonna put white in opposite and then on top no I don't want a dirty new mold I'll just suck that up with some tissue it will come off anyway. Yeah, so you can just see just how much easier it is to work in batches, um, especially with Christmas coming up. Like I said, I've got my first um, Christmas fair because obviously I only started in January, so I missed out on last year. So it's just easier to be able to batch make items. You could, like I said, use other sized glass cavachons. Just make sure that the mold is um, deep enough for them before you commit yourself right what other colors should we go for let's try yellow and white I don't think I've got much yellow left in this I'm 
Right, and I think pink and whites are going to be quite popular, so I'll do some more pink and whites. Again, it's just one drop of colour, and then one drop of the white. That's it. Don't go too. I've seen people go too far, and it just it just it makes a mess. Let's do some more purple and white. Just try and keep them as uniform as possible. I don't have my focus is locked. I'm using a different phone this time to my usual one. Mm -hmm. Just try and lock it. It just doesn't seem like it's focusing very well. We'll carry on. Let's do another pink and white down here. And again, if you haven't subbed, guys, um, just hit that sub button down there and hit that notification bell. I've not been using Facebook much recently. I normally promote new videos on there, but I'm kind of... Um, I want to kind of just see how my um, YouTube works with the notifications system. So I'm going to probably come away from posting my tutorials in Facebook groups and just work on the notifications. So if you haven't subscribed, you don't want to miss out on tutorials, so make sure you've hit that sub button for me and that notification bell. And that would help massively. And again, if you're not on TikTok, um, I know a lot of people don't trust TikTok. That's, that's completely understandable. If you do, you'll find my link in the description. I upload quite often, pretty much daily, twice daily sometimes. Um, that's in my link tree in the description as well. Come, come give me a follow over there. I come up with some, uh, sometimes just making an idiot of myself. But I come up with some good ideas on there. I've started doing some portrait coasters, which are glow in the dark. They're pretty cool. And some various bits. So what we're gonna do now is just come back in an hour, give them a swell, wait for them to cure, and then I'll show you how I stick them into my pieces. I will see you soon. Right, so we're back for the stir. I'm only, I'm only gonna show you on a couple of them and then I'll do the rest off camera just to save time. I mean, I, it's, it's really simple, really. What I do is, I mean, like I said, these aren't gonna be 100% matching, but over time of using different ones, I will get matching pairs. So, but I'll show you afterwards once they're demolded. So this consistency that you want is that when you dip your stick in, you kind of get that stringy effect. Now I was gonna use this stick, but I think my resin is a little thick, so I'm gonna quickly grab something thinner. So I'm going back with my trustworthy bent sewing pin. Now just be careful, you don't wanna scratch your mold. Um, you don't wanna to go too deep, so just draw through the, the lighter area first, and just draw it through the pink in this case and again on this one I've got kind of more white down here it's not going to match 100% but most of them will hopefully right so with the, the white and purple we're just going to draw the white through the purple like so and then the same with this one and then I will do the rest off camera and we will be back for the demold, the exciting part. And then I'll show you just how I glue them in. Right, I'll see you for the next part. Quite a few parts for this one. Bye for now. Right, so we're back. I'm just going to demold a couple, then lay them out so you can see them all done. Um, what you may find is that with the alcohol inks and these small pieces, they will shrink a bit. So what I've done in a few of them is just topped up with some UV. You can top up with regular resin, but don't take them out of the mould. Uh, make sure you top them up in the mould in case it seeps down the edges. So I'm just going to demold a couple of them just so you can see the shine. And then what I'm going to do is just pop the other ones out and just kind of pan over them um, so you can see the results of what I've done. Right, so here they are, all are taken out. As you can see, some have got more white in than the others, but because I've done other pink and whites, I can kind of mix them around so they match a lot better. But you can just see just how shiny 
these have come out. I've got a small bubble in that one. You can just see that they've, they've mimicked the glass really well. So now we're going to pop them into the pendants. So this stuff was recommended to me. It's really, really strong stuff. And what we need to do is put a small coat on each of these and in this and let it kind of sit for five minutes and then that gives it the best bond. But what you might want to do as well is just etch the back of these, score them just so that it gives a better bond. So I'm going to do that now. So as you can see, I've kind of scored the back of the, both pieces. So we just want a thin coat inside the bezel on each one. And then what I do is I just use my stick and just maneuver that all around the actual piece itself. And then I turn over and do the repeat. It won't kind of drip off, it will stay on the piece. Just make sure you get all around the edges for the best results. And again on the other side. And again we just spread that around and just cover the whole of the piece. And it is important if you haven't topped up your piece and you have got the dip in, it's not going to adhere as well. Put a little bit more on there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always good to make sure the back of the piece is flat. So that is the bezel ready. So then we just coat the two pieces with a fine coat. Not too much. And we then just spread that around. Just try and cover the whole back of each piece. And again, there are lots of different things for the same size that you can get. It's handy using that digital caliper just to search for blanks on Amazon or Etsy or other websites. So we're just going to let that sit for five minutes now and then we're going to stick them into the bezel. Right, it's been five minutes, so we're going to pop these in and we kind of want them as uniform as possible. So I'm going to put it in with the white area at the bottom of this side. And I'm just going to flip it over fiddly and then do the same with that one just try and get it as uniform as possible and then what we want to do is just with some towel just apply a little bit of pressure you might get a little bit coming out the sides but as you can see it's fairly uniformed and then we just let that sit so there we have it um, I think the cure time for the E6000 is around about 24 hours so just let them sit for long enough um, and there we go. We have a spinning pendant. Hope this one's helped guys. Again, if you haven't subbed, make sure you hit that sub button so you're aware of when I upload next. Um, yeah, thanks for everyone and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.